Hey, it's Chris here in Bover Trout Fitters, and today we're tying the Hot Butt Caddis, basically an elk hair caddis, but with a trailing shuck and a bright color. We're gonna use a standard dry fly hook. I usually tie caddis in Alberta, uh, size 14 down to about size 18 usually is the smallest. Now I'm using nano silk thread today and I'm actually gonna leave a tag end out the back uh, rather than cut it off. This way I can use this as a, a rib to keep the hackle in place. So we're gonna use Parapost material. I like that it's a vibrant color. Here we're going with orange, but it's also waterproof. And again, that's just great to help these small light dry flies float very easily on the surface of the water, not get bogged down. Cut it, uh, you know, any kind of length you want. Remember, you can always shorten the trailing shuck uh, if you need to. Uh, here, I'm gonna go about uh, almost the length of the hook here. Now for hackle, we're gonna use a ginger hackle or a grizzly hackle. I like to cut the barbules with scissors rather than strip them off. That way the remains give the thread something to really hold on to. And I want the convex edge of the barbules facing towards the eye of the hook. We're gonna tie that in. And uh, next we're gonna use dubbing. Now I'm a really big fan of super fine waterproof dry fly dubbing. It gives you a really nice thin body. You wanna make sure that you get it onto the thread and wrapped really tight. But again, it's not gonna absorb water and sink the fly really great for small patterns. We're just gonna wrap that up the hook shank and create our head and our body. And you can see a nice, simple cigar shape there. Now we're gonna wrap the hackle up and notice that when I cut those barbules, I like to have some extra distance so that when I wrap the hackle around the hook, I don't get those barbules sticking straight out the back of the hook. We're gonna palmer that and we're gonna lock it in place and we're gonna snip it off there. Okay, so now we have the rib of the nano silk that I've tied this fly with sticking out the back. And I'm gonna wrap this in the opposite direction that I wrapped the hackle to create a rib. Now, a lot of Elk Hair Caddis patterns use wire to do this, but that does add extra weight. And I want to avoid that. To be completely honest, I often won't even use a rib for Elk Hair Caddis patterns. Now, of course, it's an Elk Hair Caddis pattern, but I like to use Comparadon deer hair. I just like the size for these smaller flies. Get it measured so it just goes past the curve of the hook. Remember that when you put it on there, hold it tight, one loose wrap, and then some nice tight wraps to really lock it in place. We're gonna trim off the excess there at the head, and again, make sure that you don't crowd the eye of the hook. Otherwise, you're gonna have a really hard time getting this tied to your leader. So we're gonna whip finish it off in a dab of glue to finish things. And having that high-vis trailing shuck on the back really mimics caddis when they're escaping their larval shuck and they're trying to get off the surface of the water. It's a vulnerable time and the fish absolutely target them at that moment. Now, if you're trying to mimic caddis as they return to the river and they're laying eggs, if you find you're getting refusals, you can always just snip the shuck off and now you've got basically a standard elk hair caddis pattern. This is a great high mountain stream fly. It's a great fly here in Alberta for our nighttime caddis hatches. And don't forget, you can get all the materials online at bowrivertroutfitters.com. Thanks for joining us.